ان الحمد لله الصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله today's discussion will be a, a practical discussion perhaps may not be very deep in intellectual level whereas it's a very practical discussion applies to every single muslim every single muslim first thing to understand this is 1441 hijri a new month new year started in islamic calendar one month passed already when suffer now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the beginning of the creation allah made 12 months among them he subhanahu wa ta'ala made four of them sacred special month four of them sacred three of them are in sequence which is jul qa'dah dul hajj and muharram which is just pass and the stand alone is month of rajab which is much later than that so the month of muharram starts arabic calendar or the lunar calendar for every muslim perhaps it is fact that we are not used to with this calendar because this is not international calendar there is no point to act pious we don't use it this is fact we don't use it because this is not commonly utilized calendar across the globe so we are not <coughs> now much used to with that but to know that now is 1441 that means over 1440 years passed since this hijri calendar started so what's so special about the hijri calendar the word hijri calendar associates with the event of hijra event of hijra linguistically means a displacement moving from one location to another imam al-shawqani rahimahullah in our altar describes hijra implies in a religious context when people move from one land to another land so they get a better opportunity to practice their religion hijra could be of many form or types without going to academic discussion hijra could be from a land where muslim cannot practice their religion being minority for example move to another land where they are majority and it is easy for them to practice their religion i said land i didn't say country by the way this is this words are selected for a purpose country is political borders it really mean not much at this point but mean one land to another land from brooklyn to queens for example from new york to south carolina or to the west coast whatever one place to another place please note it could be a land neither of them being islamic country or muslim country because time for hijra starting back to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam first people move from from uh, from mecca to habasha from ethiopia they are not a muslim country either whereas the king or the president of the country was more supportive of muslim of religious freedom so on and so forth so muslim moved to another land where they could practice their religion that is the underlying cause so muslim moved from mecca to medina medina was not a formed state for the muslims either whereas there has potential there the muslim could practice their religion they were supported given nusra to given support that's why the people of their medina is called the ansar because he gave nasr support to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and those who moved with prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam from by the definition of hijra from mecca to medina they are known as muhajir allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coined a word in the quran was sabiqun al awwaluna min al muhajirin wal ansar wal ladina ittaba'uhum bi ihsan radi allah ta'ala anhum wa radwan allah has coined a word in the quran by the name of muhajir muhajir means those who take one land move from one land to another land for the pleasure of their lord that is their general sense but this is an specific definition of hijra well like in the broader definition as a matter of fact the generic definition of hijra is something else and in nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam al muhajiru man hajara ma naha allah an kama qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam a muhajir is a person who gives up something which allah doesn't like this is a muhajir very generic and broad definition and a specific instance of that is moving from one land to another land it could be another example moving from one school to another school could be another example changing one major to another major in an academic environment or changing from one house to another house closer to the masjid for example so hijra is very broad and physical movement a displacement a reallocation is only a part of it so why hijra came into play idea was that a nation 
how people want to practice La ilaha illallah at the process of practicing the many impediments which stops them from practicing they have to find alternatives where they can practice the religion that's what all the hijrah started from the hijrah is a monumental event in the history of islam i don't have to say it because based on that event the calendar started this is no small matter to us those who don't reflect may allah protect us from it those who don't reflect maybe it's just another thing it is not another thing this is the thing which is a nation chose a calendar system based on an event where people move from one place to another place. It is not the movement that matters. It is the mentality behind it, the mindset behind it. It is the intention behind it. Because Ali Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you want to say the whole Sanad of it, and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sameetu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam qal, innama al-a'malu bin niyati wa innama li kullim ni manama. Every action is judged by intention, a reward is consistent with the intention. And then he goes to a phenomenal discussion. Whoever migrates for the pleasure of Allah and his Prophet here Prophet pleasure implies the man has method all inclusive. How he does things, we need to comply with him. Having said that, Whoever moved from one land to another land for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed, there this movement, this displacement, this reallocation is for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means it is within the guideline of Islam and inshallah accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning you get reward for it. Meaning you get reward for it. If not is done the case, Allah has raised these people. Those are the first and the foremost from the muhajir, those who migrated from the Ansar who supported them. And those who follow this method, this process, this action, this example, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, Allah is placed with them. Imagine what a blank check is this. Blank check implies, I give a check to you, you write the amount as you please. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give a blank check to the Muslims. Those who follow the method of the migrants who made hijrah and those who give nasr the ansar from the people of medina allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are pleased with them and those who follow this method this way of life allah is pleased with them as well subhanallah i may not get any verse in the quran after the death of sallallahu alayhi wasallam after the death of sallallahu alayhi wasallam there is no ayat in the quran the sharia of this deen is completed and we know the whole story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah Al Ma'idah, Surah Al Ma'ida, Surah Al Ma'ida, Allah says, This deen is completed. I will not get any more wahi, any more uh, certification that Allah accepted me. I'll never get that. Well, again, Allah says, What method may get you accepted? Allah already said that. Allah said, Those who follow their footsteps in terms of being a migrant or being a supporter, either way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with them. But many people move, but do not move for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the point here. Many people select a major in their academic pursuit, but not the pleasure, not the pleasure, not for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many people get married, but not for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many people rule the cake, not the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is fundamentally problematic. I'm not saying this is a sin. There is a difference between something being problematic, doesn't mean it is a sin. It doesn't mean it's sin. It is kind of problematic. Why? Because this goes in against the very fundamental of my way of life, our way of life. What is our way of life? We just finished Hajj a month and a half ago. What is our way of life? Hajj is about Ibrahim He claimed, "Qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahya mamati lillah, faqat lillah rabbil alamin." That my prayer. My sacrifice, my living, my dying, implying your entire life A to Z is for Lillah, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But can I claim that if I select a major where it's a lot of money and that is the only objective? Can I claim that? And says no, you can't. I move from one place to another place because the property tax is less. Nothing wrong with that. Please don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with that. But the point is that this is not consistent with the thinking of a Muslim. But yes, the property tax is less, so I save some money with that. That's next year, every year I go for Umrah. Now we are okay, inshallah. 
With that money, I, I help a poor, an orphan. That's good. I give money to somebody who needs medical treatment, doesn't have insurance. I pay them. Yes, now we're talking. I move to another place, property tax is less, yes, but saving the money, I give my kids to Islamic school. Now we're talking. This is consistent with the thinking process of a Muslim. Because, inna salati wa nusuki wa mahya mamati lillahi rabbil alam. So many people in Ramadan give, what do you call this, iftar in the masjid. Ahsan, this is good. It's from the sunnah. But why are you giving? That comes first before you start giving. Intention is formed before you do that action. This is simple process. Before you drive the car, you, you know you're going to drive, so you put the key in the ignition. This is the process. But before the process take, comes to existence, the thinking process uh, is, take precedence over it. So it comes before that. So before a Muslim does something, walk to the masjid. Why are you coming to the masjid? Because this is the sunnah of Prophet And I get 25 to 27 times more ajr. And Allah and his Prophet likes it. So yes, I'm going to go to the masjid. I also go to the masjid because all my friends come in there after the salah we have a chat. Now I have some problem with it. I'm not saying this is not okay, this is in gray areas. But surely this is not the way Muslim function in their life. And therefore, if ibadah you don't do for that purpose, every action which comes after it in life must be also following the same guideline. And that comes to the very notion of hijrah. Uh, I mean, Nabi Al-Muhajir. Man hajara man Allahu an. Kama qal. A person is migrant. A person moving one land to another land is truly a muhajir if and only if the person does that very thing from moving from one location to another location so their deen could be protected and preserved. Now those who migrated from one Muslim land to another land. Now that is the burning question now I have to ask. Those who us, of us move from one land to another land. Have you done for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Answer, you don't have to say it, most likely not. Yes. If that is the case, most likely not, can I rectify this? Yes, we can, inshallah. But we need to, a problem must, must be identified first. We need to recognize either the problem to, to even start thinking about a solution. So we need to say that, yes, this is a problem we have done, not with the intention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we change our job. Allah is not in part of the equation. <coughs> yes, we got married. Allah is not part of the equation. Why I say married all the time? To, to many Muslims, this is a social process. To other people, this is a biological process. Whatever you say, the process of reproduction, being blunt. So, if you look at that, yes, it is true. But this is not the primary objective of it. Because Prophet ﷺ said, a person marries for four reasons. A person marries for four reasons. For one of them, he jamaliha. For the beauty of the sister, for example, this is masculine way of talking, by the way. I don't want to get to the complex political discussion of that, but simply saying, this, these narratives are in a masculine form. Saying a man marries uh, for the beauty of the woman, for her lineage, for limaliha, for her wealth, so on and so forth. But whoever marries for her taqwa, in akramakum, in the life, taqwa to Rahul Surah number 49, the person is more honored to Allah, those who fear Allah the most. Let me take it back. It's not the fear. We are conscious about Allah. Fear is, is not uh, exact translation of it. Being conscious. Consciousness includes fear and hope both. Khawf and raja both. Not only fear. Fear is repulsive. And khawf and raja which is consciousness. It is not. It is repulsive when you do wrong thing. And also in the same time you get close to your Lord. So this is uh, a complex phenomenon. Which for another day we'll discuss. So those people who marry for that purpose. They are the successful one. And that goes a long way. And I can speak hours in this topic of marriage for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that is not the point of discussion. The discussion is that you do any action for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including marriage. So therefore many people marry. What's your criteria? I want she has to have a PhD in uh, nuclear physics. Good. She needs to have this much money. Her father has to be that. Nothing wrong with any of the above. But that's where you end. You see, that is the period brother that's done. That is my criteria. So I need to look at the resume that it match with it. Subhanallah. Where is Allah and His Prophet in your discussion? Where is Allah? Where is your Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Where is your Deen? You Muhammad Abdullah, you for Umrah every year. You are the same person. In your life, Allah is nowhere. You more ritualistic. But Islam sits in the heart for the concept must be established. La ilaha illallah has to be understood. The message of Tawheed in itself demands that I worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And every walks of life, must be consistent with that. Did I make it up? 
answer is no. This is Surah Zariya, Surah number 51, verse number 56. Ya qul Allah Azza wa Jal, wa ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun. Allah said, I created you, men and the jinn, with no purpose. With no purpose. If the ayah ended there, we call enjoy the life for the maximum. If the, if the ayah ended there, we could have enjoyed the life to the maximum. And we believe it, brother, if that was the case, subhanAllah, I'll take the maximum out of this life. I'll take the maximum out of the dunya. Maximum out of it. But Allah said something after that. Illa liya'budun. The string attached to the statement. That made it more complex than I thought at the beginning. Allah said, I created you for no purpose except one. For ubudiyah, so you become servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Servant means you serve somebody. Serve out of the will of the master. When the mayor, the, uh, when the police commissioner is selected by the mayor, the police commissioner say, I serve at the pleasure of the mayor. That is the statement. This is a selected position. Say, I serve at the pleasure of the mayor. The, the secretary of defense serve at the pleasure of the president of the United States. President says, you leave, you leave tomorrow. You don't say no why, you don't say why. Because you have to live because you serve the pleasure of the president of the United States. A Muslim, you serve the pleasure of Allah, Rabbul Alameen. If that is not the case, how many times you make Umrah, maybe impressive resume, but to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not be an effective one. So therefore, every Muslim must think that what is this whole thing is about? The many Muslim, I'm coming to the main point now, many Muslim uh, move from one land to another land. May Allah forgive me first from the deficiencies I have. What I say doesn't mean I practice, may Allah forgive me, though I try. So I'm deficient like everybody else, we're in the same boat. There's no point pretending otherwise. Do not pretend to be pious because Allah knows what is in the heart, who is really a pious person. So the, having said that, many Muslims move from one land to another land and their children are being lost. I do a lot of youth counseling and youth programs. SubhanAllah, I see tons of Muslims from this community, community of this type by the way. The children have become atheists or at the point about being so. And I spoke to many of them myself with my own ear and tongue. I heard it and spoke to them to counsel them. I have some of my students like this, subhanAllah. Muslim parents, they say I don't practice religion. I'm not surprised. What bothers me, people are surprised about it because this is just a consequence called cause and effect analysis. Somebody in the rain, walking without an umbrella, the person gets soaked. I don't see anybody surprised about it. Let me repeat this. Somebody walking in the rain, without an umbrella, got soaked in the rain. Nobody like, eyeball is getting big. Oh, how come that's possible? If I say that you laugh at me, this is, this is a process. That somebody took a process, this is a consequence of the process. Cause and effect. Cause is the rain effect being soaked. You don't have a protective barrier, so you will be soaked. You have come where you cannot practice your deen, and your children, you voluntarily bring it here, and they cannot practice your deen. There is no protective barrier. So you sold them for the pleasure of the dunya. Allah says, يَشْتَرُونَ بِهِ سَمْنًا قَلِيلًا They have sold their akhirah for little price of the dunya. أَرَبِيْتُمْ بِالْحَيَاةِ dunya. Allah is asking, you're so pleased with this dunya that you have to get everything off it and nothing live for akhirah. وَاللَّهُ يَدْرُكُمْ إِلَىٰ دَارِ السَّلَامِ Allah is calling you towards that, that dunya. Allah is calling you to that dunya. And everybody knows this ayah in the Quran. وَالْأَخْرَةُ خَيْرُ وَأَبْقَى Everybody knows this ayah of the Quran. Everybody. Unless you become Muslim last night. Everybody knows that. وَالْأَخْرَةُ خَيْرُ وَأَبْقَى Akhira is better. And everlasting. Everlasting. You live forever. Something. If you live every day, if I get a penny for infinite time, I'll get a penny, then a billion dollar today. Why so? Because billion dollar is the one instant of a payment is going to die out. No matter how long I do. I mean, no matter how long I have it, but one day I'm going to lose it. Finish it up. But if I have one penny per day, till infinite time, because I'm getting money all the time and it's going to add up, there's no end to it. Whatever doesn't have end, no matter how small that is, that is definitely better, common sense. But Allah said, whatever akhir is khair, it is better, not less. It is better in quality and quantity and it lasts forever. How can somebody else do something better than that? Allah says, dunya. You love the dunya so much, you're so happy with that. You got miscalculated. There's some problem with this math equation now. Muslims need to rethink. Am I making these stories up? Answer is no. Let me give a story in 1989. Let me give a quick story. There's a brother in Brooklyn. Uh, he had a grocery store. One morning, many years ago, one morning, 
uh, he is playing Surah Rahman. I still remember that. After Fajr, playing Surah Rahman. So I to the brother, I said, Salam alaikum, Akhi, mashallah, nice Quran. But your store has Khanzir and Khamra also. But it is not consistent. I don't have to be a scholar to understand this is common sense. One thing Muslim doesn't have logical thinking. That, that is another academic deficiency of Muslims, which we're going to talk about another day. You, scholar is, is obviously quicker, no shadow of doubt. But some basic thing, you don't need to be a scholar using common sense. Exercising basic faculty. The person playing the Quran and they're selling 40 ounce beer in there and, 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 and uh, khazir, uh, the pork sandwich, whatnot. I said, brother, something's not consistent. A person listening to the book of Allah for ajr, for reward, the same person selling haram. Something is not right in this. So, brother, brother, tell me, I'm just giving ideas what happens when people turn around their big mouth. The brother said, Brother, you speak Arabic because of what, what that has to do with Arabic? What I told you, I spoke something very straight. What does that have to do with Arabic here? I can say in Chinese. In fact, in Chinese, you know, we understood what I was telling you, right? You understood what I told you. Then I said, okay, you, you like Arabic? Innam al khamr wal maisurid, this ayah in the Quran, that Allah made it haram for you. Now you understand it? You understood English as well, but you just want to bring the Arabic in the middle. Okay, Abu Jahl spoke Arabic, so what? So what? It is, a, it, it is a medium of communication. Allah says, Inna anzallahum Qur'an in Arabiya la lakum ta'kinu. I made the Qur'an in Arabic language so that you may understand because these are the Arabs. If it is German, people in Makkah don't understand it. This is common sense, sound reasoning. But it doesn't make Arabic like any language. That's not true, by the way. Arabic is an important language because this is the language the Qur'an came in so I have to study it and learn it. But the brother was using the Arabic as a way to stop me, cut me off, so he can run with that. So I said, hold up, you can't talk like that. Okay, I gave you the Arabic, now what? Now the brother humbled himself, mashallah, he said, you know brother, I work there, I'm not the owner. You should have said that at the beginning. You were doing something wrong, you've been arrogant with that. That's the problem right there. But this story is not going to work. The many Muslim has business in that haram, Allah made it haram. When Allah made some haram, you choose to comply with that, and ignore Allah's ayat. Allah said, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَصُ اللَّهِ فَأَنْسَوْمَ أَنْفُسَمْ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ الْفَاسِكُونَ Surah Hashr Surah number 59. Surah Hashr Surah number 59, the second last page, the last ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't be like those who forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah make them forget themselves. Allah make them forget themselves. So after they send khutbah in another masjid, the brother, it is in bronze, the brother came. He's a brother from certain country by looking at him I know. Certain country from Arab world. He said, brother, the khutbah applies to my family. My family is like, like, like messed up. What can I do? Many Muslims realize after the damage is done. So the damage, those are not done yet. We need to be proactive. We need to do something about it. Every children here we raise and they are not saying La ilaha illallah because we choose to raise them in a situation that they've been victimized with the social corruption, Muslim today, into drugs, into crime, and many other social, moral, illegal things in this country. In the city of New York, in Brooklyn. I can act pious with this, but fact remains, end of the day, when you open it, you find the real person behind it. The children going down the drain, and parents are expecting miracles to happen. Miracle doesn't happen like this, my brother. Prophet ﷺ had to go to the battle of Badr, being a Nabi of Allah, with Ashar and Mubashirin with him. With Umar and Uthman Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu being the kibar of the Sahaba, the elite people with him, he had to stand in the field for the help of Allah to come. We're sitting in the masjid eating uh, yummy food and thinking this is how it's going to work. This is not going to work. This is not going to work. So Muslims need to be proactive. And being proactive start in personal level in everybody's house. Everybody's house we raise our children. And proactive is community center in Masajid. That's how it starts. Every house it is a small masjid, where the parents have to take care of the children, guide them. When the children come to the masjid, they need to find masjid in another institution. Masjid is an institution. Prophet Sallallahu made masjid in Masjid al Nawi in Medina not to pray. Good morning. If you didn't know, at least let's know this now. I'm not being arrogant. They don't pretty upset about this. Because Muslim being so ritualistic, so confined with limited thinking, so shallow. It's too late now. We need to change it. Masjid is not a prayer institution. This is not a church. This is not a synagogue. This is a masjid. This is a message of Tawheed. Those who understand Tawheed 101, Islam 101, those who know basics. Allah saying masjid is in a place 
for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَا اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Don't call upon anybody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do you mean by that? It is a center where you build generation. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam built generation. Ashab al-Suf, those are poor people, they used to live in the masjid. Masjid in the institution. It was a homeless center. It is an academic place, institution. This covers people. It gives zakah. It collects charity. It sees who is sick. This is a community where people find, you know, when the heart has pain, they come to a place to find comfort. The hungry people find food. This is an institution. What happened to Muslim country is become a prayer place only. This was never meant to be such. It was never meant to be such. Because Muslim can pray everywhere. This is only Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam granted this. That every part of the earth except bathroom and graveyard we could pray. This is the privilege Allah gave to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam unlike the Ummah before us. But that's not the point of discussion. Point is, our children. We move with Hijrah to one place, our children been sacrificed for that. And in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, كُلُّكُمْ رَعِيْنْ كُلُّكُمْ رَعِيْتِهِ كَمَا All of us are shepherds, are managers, are in charge of something, of somebody. And Allah is going to ask about us, how did he handle that in charge business? Allah is going to ask about that. The having a children is fun, but it's a big time responsibility. Every parent is responsible for their children. I heard, I almost cried. The man, mother is crying in the phone, saying that my son is gone, I don't know what to do, I pray for him, I beg him. The son tells me, why my mother have to cry for me? My son with me. If I go to hell, I go to hell, so what? Why my mother is worried, why she's crying? The mother is begging and crying the son to pray. Brother and sister, begging is not going to do it. It's not an emotional thing. It's an intellectual thing. The person doesn't agree with this concept. I have nephew. I saw them from six months old. In Brooklyn. He's now a medical doctor. He says, Uncle, I, I don't believe in this thing. I just pray when I come to my dad's house because otherwise you'll be sad. But this is not Islam. It is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm an older person. I may think like this. My child don't think like this. Because they are growing up in a different environment. And he miscalculated the whole thing, my brother and my sister. Ask every man and woman, what is your goal? To buy a house, buy a nice car, vacation every year overseas. Akhi, these are not goals, these are actions. This part of the process, what's your goal? My goal is please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is my goal. I'm a Muslim. Inna salati wa nusuki mahiya mamati lillahi rabbil alayhi. That's a Muslim, by definition. Why am I going to give zakah, waste my heart and money? I'm going to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have a lot of food in my freezer. Why am I going to, why am I going to, why am I going to remain hungry for the whole day? What kind of crazy thing is this? I don't need to lose weight. Why should I be not eating the month of Ramadan? I have to please my Lord. The way you understand this in act of ibadah, raising children also part of act of ibadah. And you are accountable for it. If you don't make sunnah salah in the masjid, if you don't fast Monday and Thursday, if you don't do umrah, Allah is not going to ask you of your judgment. These are from the mustahab, from the sunnah. But your children is wajib like making salah. If you don't know that, let me repeat this. Taking care of the children is wajib. It's an obligation. If you can handle it, don't have a family then. At least you worry about yourself. Because Yaqudullah subhanahu wa ta'ala ku anfusakum. nara. Save yourself. That's where it ends if you don't have a family, mashallah khalas. But if you have family, walikum and save your family as well. It's an obligation. We look at other stuff. Giving iftar in the masjid, building institution centers, and inviting scholars to speak. This is fine things. But you're not obligated to do that. You need to obligate, you're obligated to take care of yourself in your deen and your children. We're being negligent on that. There's no shadow of doubt. And those children, they of judgment have a case against us. And I don't want to go into the details of that topic, but you can check the ayah. Allah said, Najal huma tahta mina liyakuna min al asfali. Those who misled these children, they of judgment, they have a case against them in their judgment in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that beloved children of ours will be the one being cased against. So we really need to take it serious. This is no entertaining discussion. On many people, to conclude the matter, many people is to... I'm not against this thing. People start misquoting me and that makes me quite upset. He said this. And I find this is lack of intellect of people. Every discussion within a context of something. Half an hour I cannot discuss for 30 hours. So this discussion is confined to the topic of Hijrah. I'm insisting on certain points. Doesn't negate the fact other things also has to be done. So a lot of people into memorizing dua and subhanallah one time give you 7,000 hasanat, alhamdulillah do 80,000 of that. They sit down with a calculator adding things up. What are you doing? I mean, what are you doing all this small stuff? 
You lost your goal. The sideline is not going to do it. It's like a computer. You strike in the keyboard, but it didn't turn the power on. It's never going to type anything for you. Subhanallah. Strike the keyboard, you break the keyboard, it's not going to work. Why not? Because the power of the computer is missing, you have to turn it on. Subhanallah, your deen is off. Islamic concept is missing. You're doing ibadah like a machine, like a robot. It is not going to work. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. Inna alhamdulillah, salatu salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa ala You know, time is short. This topic is so comprehensive. You know, we can't cover anything. So I have to leave it for half of the khutbah for another day. But to conclude the matter, the hadith I started with, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said from Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. By the way, this hadith in Muttafiqan Ali, he came in Bukhari Muslim book. It is authentic. Alhamdulillah. So the hadith Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَمَنْ كَانَ هِجْرَتُهُ And whoever make hijra, لِدُّنِيَا يُسْرِبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَاتٍ يَنْفِهُهَا There's two elements Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put in the same hadith. And whereas if somebody make hijrah, rather than Allah and His Prophet, they make hijrah for some matters of the material of the dunya, for this life, or to marry a woman. Very powerful elements put in the hadith, subhanAllah. Or to marry a woman, these two topics put into that. Then their hijrah, it whatever they made the hijrah for. That means Allah has nothing to do with it, that's the thing. So everything we do, in any act we do, has to be consistent with the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I do otherwise, I'm wasting my time. To make a point very clear, a religious act done for anybody beside the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads to shirk. At least shirk al azgar yeah. At least that. At least that. But playing soccer, playing baseball, to show other people, it's not real. It's not, because this is not an act of worship. So if you end up doing real, an act of uh, to showing people off, not to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you better do some other act. Till your heart gets settled, then you come back again. Because playing, eating something, is not for the pleasure of Allah, so you will get penalized for it, because you're showing off ibadah, to get the praise from people. That's the problem. But if you do something for the pleasure of Allah, so you're ready for it, then do it. Otherwise, fix the mind first, then continue doing it. Don't give up doing it. Only saying, we need to fix the mind. To conclude the matter, what is hijrah? And in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Muhajir man hajir man Allahu an. A Muhajir is a person who gives up something for the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Move to different uh, major. I was studying law. I'm going to study now physics. Why? In law, I have to do a lot of stupid stuff. I have to lie a lot of time. As a Muslim, I can do that, so I'm changing it. For example, I'm not saying this is fact. I'm just giving an example. <coughs> I want to study medicine, but you know, I want to study medicine, then it will allow me to take a lot. I have to take some loan from the bank, and there's a riba. Many of the ulama said there's some problem with that. Uh, I'm going to change a major where I don't have to take any loan. This is hijrah for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to marry this sister, looks so beautiful, mashallah, very eloquent and speaking, very educated. Parents are very educated, has a lot of money, mashallah, I like it, and she's obsessed about me. She's crazy about me. I'm just, you know, but subhanAllah, I found her being is shaky. Her taqwa is not there. Everything is for dunya. So subhanAllah, give this up. I found another sister, mashallah, she is not that much, but her deen is there. Because you go to grave with deen, not with beauty, by the way. If you didn't know that, you should go to one of the funerals and see when the person dies, whole body become pale. The beauty is gone at that moment. It doesn't take too long. You have to put in a freezer, otherwise the smell will be so stinky, you can't sustain, uh, uh, people can't stand next to it. So this is how the dunya is so short, so we, should, we are running after it, knowingly it's not going to last. So this is a problem, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, But al-hayat dunya Very do you love this dunya? It is not I am saying it, this is fact. Why? Because Allah already said that subhanahu wa ta'ala. So since Allah said that it is fact, that we are behind the dunya, Allah said you should be running towards Akhla, so every Muslim must think that we move to another land, not for Allah, that's a mistake. Now how can I rectify it? If I have some haram in business, I have to stop it. My children, I have to try. If they're 15 years old, you cannot force them now, it's too late. So you need to culture them. There's another process involved. But little ones, you need to work with it. Brother, to conclude the matter, don't be cheap in religion. Brother, don't be cheap into the religion. Don't be cheap into the religion. Why so? Many people collect money saved, don't want to put to Islamic school. Not want to put the kids in, in weekend schools. Because they have to pay for it. They have to save the money to buy a new car. My brother, after 15 years, the car is not new anymore. It's not. Subhanallah. 
but the 15 years investment of the children, the moment you can't breathe anymore, they put an oxygen mask, you're barely breathing, your eyes is about to close, that moment you realize that investment for the cause of Allah has a lot of benefit. Because the car title will be switched as soon as you die. So you're really investing in the wrong place. They have the Muslim need to think, those who made hijrah, we need to make hijrah with the mind first, then start with the body and invest for akhirah, because that is going to last for us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to understand. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا سرافنا في أمرنا وصبت أقدامنا وسنا وقوم الكافرين اللهم احسن عقبتنا في الأمور كلها واجبنا من خزي الدنيا عذاب الآخرة اللهم رب الحمهما كما ربيني صغيرة اللهم رب الحمهما كما ربيني صغيرة اللهم رب الحمهما كما ربيني صغيرة اللهم ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا ذريتنا كرة عين وجعلنا للمتقين إمام الصلاة رحمة الله